Why did the right triangle go to the beach? Because it was 90 degrees. Okay, uh, in this lesson, well, in this whole set of lessons, we're looking at triangle angles and also mid-segments. For this first part, we're going to be focusing on interior and exterior angles. Now, you've already heard of interior angles, and when I talk about angles in a triangle, those are the ones you naturally think of. They are the angle formed by two sides of the triangle, and they're inside of it. So the angles that are interior angles here are angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. Exterior angles we haven't really talked about, but as you know what from our previous lessons, exterior means outside. So it's formed by one side of the triangle and the line that's extended. So here's the side for this angle 5, and see how I extend this other side here? So angle 5 is an exterior angle also angle 4 and angle 6. So the exterior angles in this uh, diagram are angles 4, 5, and 6. Now I could have actually drawn this line a little differently so it extends here, and I could have done that with any of those three angles, and my angle 6 could have actually been here. The cool thing is the size of angle 6 won't change because if I had extended that line, you would notice that this is a vertical angle to the green angle I have highlighted. So um, angle 6, this exterior, will be the same size as if I drew it down here. Now this brings up an interesting relationship between exterior and interior angles. The relationship is between an exterior or outside angle and the remote interior angles. So what is a remote interior angle? It's inside, and remote means far away. It is not touching the exterior angle. So triangles will always have two remote interior angles for any exterior angle. In this example, I'm going to name the remote interior angles for angle 5. So I'm not going to use angle 2 because that's adjacent. It's touching angle 5. But I can use angle 1 and angle 3. Those are the remote interior angles for angle 5. Here, now I'm going to look at a different angle, angle 4. Well, I'm not going to have angle 1 anymore because that's adjacent to angle 4. I'm going to use angle 2 and angle 3. So angle 2 and angle 3 are the remote interior angles for angle 4. Now this brings up the exterior angle theorem. Basically what it says, and I'm about to prove it to you, is that the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the measures of its remote interior angle. So I'm going to prove it and then we'll use it. The proof is I've got measure of angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 180 for this diagram, right? I'm going to prove that angle 4 equals angle 2 plus angle 3. That's my goal. So I'm going to start by saying, okay, all three of these angles is a triangle that have to add up to 180, and that is a triangle sum theorem. Also, I know that angle 1 and angle 4 add up to 180 because they're linear pairs. Now the cool thing I can do is I can subtract the measure of angle 4 from both sides here, and I find out that the measure of angle 1 is 180 minus measure of angle 4. I was able to subtract by the subtraction property of equality. Then I'm going to actually substitute this in from this step right here up on top, and it will become 180 minus measure of angle 4 in for angle 1, plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180, and that was substitution. Now I can subtract 180 from both sides, and I get the sum of these angles, uh, the negative measure of angle 4 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 0. <coughs> so I subtracted, excuse me, 180 from both sides using the subtraction property of equality. Finally, I'm going to use the addition property of equality to add the measure of angle 4 to both sides. And I get the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 4. I might have been able to do this in less steps if I had used the congruent supplements theorem. It's a little tricky because I have three angles that are supplementary here and two angles that are supplementary here. But if this is supplementary to 1 and these two are supplementary to 1, then these two angles are congruent. So that might have been a nicer, shorter proof. So how do we apply the exterior angle theorem? We're going to set up an equation for the unknowns. The exterior angle equals 
the remote interior angle 1 plus remote interior angle 2, whatever those are. So it can be a really simple problem. Let's say I'm looking for this exterior angle. Well, it's just going to be these two angles added together. So it'll be 82 plus 44, which is 126. Now, you might see a simple problem like this, but odds are you're actually going to see uh, something more like this with a little more algebra in it. So we're going to do the same thing. The exterior angle is the sum of the two remote interior angles. So I'm going to say 6x plus 5 equals those two added together. 6x plus 5 is 4x minus 6 plus 3x minus 10. Combine my like terms, subtract 6x from both sides, and then add 16 to both sides. And I get x is 21. Now that I know x is 21, I can find the rest of the angles. Substituting 21 in for x, I get 6 times 21 plus 5, or 126 plus 5, which is 131. Next, I go 4 times 21 minus 6, which is the same as 84 minus 6, or 78 degrees. Finally, 3 times 21 minus 10 is 63 minus 10, which is 53. And you can double check this, 78 plus 53 will give you 131. So the sum of the two remote interior angles equals the exterior angle. So for further reflection, how can you tell the difference between interior and exterior angles? And how are they related?